Hello and welcome to What the Flick. We're going to have a really super sexy, intimate edition of What the Flick. We're talking about the paper boy, which has urine and alligator guts and shirtless Zach Efron. And what more do you want in a movie? It's all, it's all there. <laughs> um, I'm Christy. This is Alonzo. Um, we've both seen Paper Boy and we are dying to tell you about it. <laughs> We're really excited, actually. So please take it away. So based on the novel by Pete Dexter, it is set in Florida in the late 60s. And uh, it's about a... Oh, sorry. You're on two. <laughs> Just pick up at the plot thing? Yeah. So based on the novel by Pete Dexter, it is set in Florida in the late 60s during a very hot summer. Uh, Zach Efron is a college dropout who uh, his dad owns the local newspaper and his brother is a reporter, Matthew McConaughey, who is investigating whether or not John Cusack has been put in jail uh, wrongly. And uh, Nicole Kidman plays John Cusack's sort of jailhouse groupie who's been communicating with him by mail. And everybody sweats a lot, and other fluids are involved as well. Take a look. <laughs> it's about the murder of Sheriff Call. I understand the judge allowed testimony based on evidence that he never even saw. Dangerous. 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 When it is played at the Cannes Film Festival, the thing that everyone was talking about afterward was like, there's this scene where Nicole Kidman pees on Zac Efron. Yes, and apparently not a special effect. <laughs> Oh, she really actually She really did, did it. Apparently wow. she said, yeah, she was, you know. And Very she method. Doesn't, she doesn't just pee on him. She, like, punches two girls to get them out of the way <laughs> so that she gets to pee on him and not them. Right. Just, so There's so a yeah, jellyfish thing yeah, involved. Yeah, I was going to say, it's relevant you. in context. He goes into the ocean <laughs> and he gets attacked by a bunch of jellyfish, even though he was this Olympic caliber swimmer. Um, she gets to pee on him. This scene was not nearly as cringe-inducing as I thought it was going to be, because we'd all heard so much about it. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? But then when she does it, it's shot in this very kind of hallucinatory way, which, yeah, which is relevant dappled. and makes sense, because he's kind of like in and out of consciousness, and right. there's you know, this six-foot-tall blonde chick peeing all over him, which might have been his fantasy or not. Who uh, knows? But I think they handle it in a surprisingly graceful way. I guess. I mean, it's yeah, if you're expecting it to be like divine eating dog poop at the end of Pink Flamingos, it's it's not quite that, you know, but it's, this movie is loony. Yeah. I mean, it is so overdone and it's so crazy about like, everybody is talking and thinking about sex all the time mm -hmm. and they're all sweating. And like, you know, there's a scene where, where like they go visit John Cusack in prison and he and Nicole Kidman are like 10 feet away from each other. And they're sort of like, she's miming a blow job on him and she rips her pantyhose open so she can he, he can see her underwear and he comes in his pants and it's just like what is she going comes, on she the comes too she's swarming <laughs> in her chair they both do it's, without even touching they make each other come nuts this movie and 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 pedro almodovar wanted to make this movie for years and i think That's he's so funny i think he's the only guy who could have made this work not John Waters. No, maybe John <laughs> Waters, but I think I think Almodovar could have gotten like the melodrama right and the crazy mm -hmm. sex stuff right, and given it a certain sort of fervor and energy, and and kind of made this story work. <coughs> I think Lee Daniels is just sort of all over the place. Right. You've got this narration by Macy Gray, who winds up being like the 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 center of gravity. Like she gives the most sort of calm and you know serious performance in the film oddly enough um, she brings some wacky to it too she's she's a long time housekeeper she has a, a personality a to little her. yeah no no yeah. i'm not saying she's stiff but i mean just it turns out of, of this cast she's the one sort of the, the she's the one with the gravitas um but then the narration's all over the place because sometimes it's sort of like her point of view and then other times right. she gets more omniscient and then she's talking to the audience and yeah. uh, just and all she's sorts weird, of Yeah, she's weirdly weird. omniscient in ways that she couldn't possibly yeah, be. Yeah, just cra really crazy stuff going on and like, you know, Matthew McConaughey, it turns out, is into this like rough trade and mm -hmm. Zac Efron is basically in the movie to be in his tidy whities as much as possible. Although <laughs> even Lee Daniels acknowledged at Cannes, he's like, He's great looking and I'm gay. Well, so enough yeah. said. No, I know. He, if is, he is, he's in the, in, in the rain, he's in his tiny whiteies. Yeah. And he's just like lying around in bed. Be yeah, and oh, sweating. yeah, yeah. I and, mean, it's any, totally gratuitous. Anybody, but who's, funny. anybody who writes like a thesis about like the gay male gaze on, <laughs> you know, they have to talk about like Rocco and his brothers and, you know, Tigerland and this movie. It's <laughs> like he is, he is fetishized by the camera. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, on a camp level, this almost works because it's so just cuckoo bananas mm -hmm. but I, I this is a mess this movie it's it's if you're if you're expecting it to be like lee daniels is precious it's way more like lee daniels is shadow boxer yeah. his nutty first movie yeah but it, it sort of expands on the ick factor and the melodrama of precious and i was vacillating throughout the entire thing i couldn't decide whether he's really serious like he means this to be serious art or he means for it to be a grindhouse style 
parody because it's not quite that far. Yeah. And yeah, I wonder, like, the, the, the way that it's shot, it's shot in this very kind of faded way that, that suggested it was made during the period in which it was set. Yes, and, that part the, they get yeah, right. And the fact that, like, the narration is off, is that intended to be off because it's meant to be a bad movie? I, I, can't, I, th I can't think tell. I think that if Daniels were a better filmmaker, yeah. we would have a clearer idea yeah. of his intentions, but it's sort of all over the place. I mean, you're right, the, the, the cinematography is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the fact that, actually I thought that the, the stuff with uh, Macy Gray as the long the family's longtime maid and how she interacts with the family and how they treat her mm -hmm. uh, was all smarter than almost anything in the help. You know, right. as far as like kind of nailing that dynamic and getting it where it didn't feel phony or, mm -hmm. you know, sort of exaggerated. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so there are, you know, there were some interesting things in the film, but uh, for the most part, I, like if it had been better or if it had been worse, I think it would be a more <laughs> fun experience. But in, it's sort of, it's in this middle ground of like vacillating crazily yeah. between just nutty town and then sort of trying to be this serious drama. They don't really seem to care about the plot. The whole, did he murder him or not thing. That doesn't matter. Kind of goes out the window. It's really about Zac Efron being all horny for Nicole Kidman. And it's about everyone being horny for everybody else all the time. Yeah. And along those lines, I think John Cusack is really good in this. In that it's a massive departure for him from the likable good guy roles we know him for. He's really deeply creepy in this. He really goes for it. Yeah. He's very disturbing. No, Dev, I mean, it's it's overdone, but at least it's it's committed, I'll say he that He commits much. to the role. <laughs> and, and I think Nicole Kidman is good Nicole in this. Nicole Kidman commits, but it's like, but I didn't buy it for a second. No? Like she, well, because she's shot like this sort of, se like a 60s sex goddess. Like, she's got the bardo hair, mm. you know, and all that stuff. So I didn't buy that this is a woman who writes prisoners. She's damaged. And I, yeah, she's but it's just... Alcoholic. I know, I know, but I, I just, bought her. but I didn't, but you know what? Damaged alcoholics get laid, especially <laughs> when they look like Nicole Kidman. She hates herself, clearly, and this person gives her self esteem. I was okay with that, and because okay. she reminds me of a more damaged, more extreme version of the character she played in To Die For, in that there was mm. all this bravado that, that covered up how delusional she was, sure. and uh, and she finds the humor in it, but also the, the fragility in it. I, I liked her a lot in this. Matthew McConaughey can play charming in his sleep. This, this, no, is, this is, he's fine. He's fine. Zach yeah. Efron's fine because he has to be the straight man, as it were, yeah. as it were, <laughs> in the middle of all these crazy <laughs> cuckoo characters. So. He's kind of a blank, and I mean, I guess partially that's the, the purpose of the character, but the idea also is it's supposed to be he's the one who eventually writes this whole story, like, uh, which uh, I didn't buy for a second. Is he the one they, interviewing Macy Gray at the no, beginning he's of the, the film? One who was interviewing Macy inter Gray? I don't know who's interviewing Macy Gray, but they're asking her about the book that had come oh. out about all this, which Zephyrin, Zach Efron's character Zephyrin. has supposedly, <laughs> Zephyrin. I like that. Which Zephyrin <laughs> has supposedly written, and I was like, wait, you he could form sentences? I never got any of that With from this movie. With yeah. them? So it, I, I, I will say this is a movie that people should see just because you won't believe what you're seeing, but it doesn't mean it's very good. Yeah, it'll be fun to talk about with your friends afterward. Totally, yes. um, So your Have number is? I give it a three. And I'm giving it a six. So our average is four and a half, and it's like 47%-ish in tomato world. So, yeah. It's, kind of wacky. It's but a piece of work. But <laughs> disappointingly not wacky enough. Yeah, exactly. I, that's yeah. what I get. I think, I think Almodovar would have really just pushed it all to the limit and made all the different parts work. Here, I kind of feel like they're all, they, he didn't commit to any direction and tries all of them, and they don't. it doesn't gel. All right, go see it and let us know what you think. Yeah. Bye.